a, a popular rapper named 2K Baby, who's one of the big guys right now, says, and, and I quote, your favorite rapper, you pan gangs for protection, no lie. When you were coming up in the music industry, you know, this is my question for you. Um, when you were coming up in the music industry, do you know anything about like certain artists, you know, even before Crips and Bloods, like I heard Frank Sinatra, for, for instance, worked really closely with the mob. Um, do you know, was that common back in the day, May 70s and 80s for artists to, you know, ha have gang members as protection? No, no. Um, I heard Teddy Pendergrass had, had um, mob issues because they wanted him to be one of their artists, something like that. I watched his documentary and uh, that was Philadelphia. That's, that's been, that's been black and brown mob for a long time. Okay. Um, but far as LA, nah, man, I mean, Gangs and gangs and music didn't even meet till the nineties in L.A. Mm -hmm. You know, war didn't have war, war wasn't gang related. Whispers wasn't gang related. You know, they went to Fremont. You know, they you know now nah, uh, nah, 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 understand this: the music business always has had its uh, mob ties. Okay, mm -hmm. but it wasn't tied to hip hop at, at that time. Okay, it, we didn't get we didn't get this hip hop hip hop and gangs to the late eighties, early nineties. That was none of us, man. I'm, I, I, I've been all over the damn country. Ain't nobody ever sweated me. Never got sweated. And I never yeah. met nobody. You know, checking in, checking in with the, with the with the latest at the hotel, see what the girls look like. That's about it. <laughs> Different time, man. You know what? We we talked about this, but it's been over a year, probably even close to two years, um, since you told this story. And maybe you can give it a revisit. Tell us about that time you were laying down in your bed and in the middle of the night, you get a call from someone who sounds like they're from the mob, the mafia. Oh, true story. Um, I did a, did a deal with Turn Off the Lights and uh, I had a new management team and uh, they gave me 25 grand to do a new album. I didn't want to sign the contract. I was, they would handle it. Okay. I said, what do I do to, with contract? She said, no, I'll take the contract. Give me my cut. Meanwhile, I hadn't signed to him yet. I did a, a licensing deal with priority. Priority was always doing those, uh, compilation albums. So do the compilation, do the deal with priority, ask to get permission to deal with priority. And all of a sudden, it was about six, six o'clock in the morning, my time. I get this phone call, and this guy, you know, is Alonzo Williams in? I said, yeah, can I help you up, sleep? Uh, I like to, you know, it's Alonzo, yes. Uh, guys like you, if you were here in New Jersey, they find you in the East River. Oh, like, what the fuck? What are you talking about? <laughs> we understand you sold our record to another company after we paid you for it. I'm like, what are you talking about? And I'm scared to death. I'm scared. I woke up, no coffee, no nothing. I'm not wide awake. Excuse <laughs> me. This is not, this is what happened. I explained it to him. I said, look, man, your guy is not telling you the that ex ex absolute truth. He will stop talking long enough for me to explain what happened. This is the guy I'm telling the guy about this man. Your guy talk so much. He don't never listen. You got him right. Ha, 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 ha. And I, I broke it down, what happened. And the guy apologized. I apologized for the misunderstanding. I'm glad I had a chance to talk to, to you. Now, meanwhile, I'm still scared to death, okay? I don't you up like that right there. It changes your whole attitude about a whole lot of things. Now, I'd already been warned about getting in the car with certain people. I've been warned in the car with certain people. And every okay. time I'd get rid of, every time I would go someplace, he want me to ride with him. Same. And I always had to go piss. I don't know. I, I, quick car, I'll be right back. I'd go yeah. inside of my car, the car didn't blow up, I'd go outside and get in the car with him. And she waited some bitch drove, I'd have been better off if the car blew up. This motherfucker could not drive, okay? I'm riding like this the whole damn time, okay? Um Every time I let, from that point on, 
every time I went to McCullough, I was every time, every time, because this was some real shit. Okay, when you talk about uh, souls, I, dude, I swear I was hanging out with Big Pussy and Polly. I'm not bullshitting. I'm not bullshitting. It felt just like that after 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 that phone call. You know, sometimes you can be in a situation and something happened and now you reevaluate everything that you're dealing with. And it wasn't until I saw the Sopranos, I realized what I was dealing with. Okay. So they flew a bunch of guys out here. They was all hanging out, talking shit, blah, 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 eat all day, go to these restaurants and, you know, take care of business. Makota getting these, uh, uh, Makota get these big ass envelopes full of money and shit. And it was really, it was really, I, I, I saw Sopranos and saw how that shit operate. I'm like, God damn, I was involved. I was in the middle of this shit. And meanwhile, meanwhile, my former bandmates is telling that, telling the world they're a bunch of gangsters. I'm, I'm, I'm hanging out with the goddamn Sopranos. Meanwhile, <laughs> here telling the world that they hanging out in Calabasas. <laughs> they hanging out in Calabasas. I'm, I'm, dude, dude. This, this is the part about this West Coast thing that. Only I I seen, only I know, okay? Because by this time, Egypt was gone, Rudy was gone, Dream on. Record Crew was the only person, that, Record Crew was one of the last groups at Macola when they shut down. We had left, we were the first one to leave and one of the first ones to come back. And I was still there when uh, they had their they they revampment, okay? And uh, so it's not a lot of people know these stories, okay? Uh, one of my boys, Told you story. My boy, I'll call his name out because um, I ain't gonna call his name out because I'm gonna keep his an anonymity. But what am I, we talked about these stories before because he was a he <laughs> he know all these players. Okay, he know all these players. All right, he know all these players, and it's uh um I, I know him, but I keep my distance, Doc, because like I said before um it don't take a whole lot for you to end up in a some big shit. and that's the part I, I can't deal with just like just like in in uh good fellows little dude was serving uh the, the alcohol and and then and, and uh homeboys oh, Joe Pesci, I'm yeah, a clown what made what 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 I make you laugh what no no it, it, they was playing poker oh okay. homeboy from Homeboy from, from, from the Sopranos was, was serving them drinks. Where's my drink at? Oh, he didn't want no yeah. goddamn. He didn't want no drink. You said you were okay, okay. And you know this thing. You know you you don't see me. Little you things. Little things like that, okay. And the kid gets shot in the mm -hmm. foot. After he shoot him in the foot, he, he, he dude, you shot me in the foot. I ain't, I don't like you. So now you gonna tell? Now you wanna talk shit to me now? And that homeboy stood up for himself. That um, Robert De Niro was just messing with it, messing with um, Joe Pesci, but he still shot the kid and killed him. I'll bury his ass in the morning. Okay, yeah. I'll bury his ass tomorrow. You, you get the like that, man. Okay, who was the, dude? That that man didn't go to work that day. I mean, I know it was a movie. I know it was a movie, but. You know the same thing with in in the bar when they when they end up killing the, the guy just got out of jail. Okay, go get mm -hmm. your shine yeah. box. The yeah. shine box, yeah. Shine box. Okay, I mean those stories. If you know anything about that situation, those are real situations that happened that just got converted to a movie. Okay, they took some mm -hmm. good stories and they put them and put them in a the movie. Of course, they embellished a little bit to make it um to make it better. Yeah, Michael Imperioli. Okay. Yeah, he got he. They killed him because he he told Joe Pesci to go fuck bring the drink. Right. Yeah. All right. So when 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 you see when you've been around situations, you've seen simple situations turn into uh, catastrophes. Man, who wants to be around that kind of shit? Who wants to play that kind of game? I don't. I don't. Mm -hmm. so I don't put myself in that position. Yeah. If I think it's going to be there, I get it. Simple as that. I ain't got nothing to prove. Yep. 